I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's ridiculous in this or any other time that I feel compelled to report on the Disney live-action remake of Snow White. It is, after all, a kid's movie and such things should really be beneath a grown-ass man to discuss. However, the problem is that this kid's movie has become embroiled in a series of colossal controversies, including the perception of people with dwarfism, the potential racism of casting an apparently non-white woman to play a white female character, the prepared response to anyone who notices that from Disney. Disney and the actress herself, her criticism of traditional family values, and of course the movie's embroilment in the literal war going on in the Middle East. I'm telling you, this is a ridiculous era where we feel the need to discuss and focus on kids' movies, Disney movies, because they might be harmful to children. But what are you going to do? It might be harmful to children, and it's certainly bad for culture. So here I am. Recapping the whole festering mess, as described by a leftist. Join me. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name's Will. See what I did there? Hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. We're going to go down the rabbit hole once again into the Snow White conundrum. <laughs> the paradoxical, controversial kids movie. And we're going to look at an article from an outlet that I really have no respect for whatsoever, The Guardian, as they attempt to unpack this whole holy mess. So, if you're liking the video, be kind, hit like, helps others to find it, which helps me to help you, and of course, don't forget to subscribe for more news, reviews, commentary, and a rebellion, courtesy of me and the Griff Force. Alright! Damn it, here we go. Okay, Bad Apple, how Disney's Snow White remake turned sour. Yeah, not a bad title from Eric Berger. It needs to be pointed out, if you don't somehow already know, The Guardian is one of the most far-left publications in our world. So, I guess I'm just a glutton for punishment. But let's see how they try to um, unpack all these controversies that have been caused by leftism. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just have some fun. In theory, it must have sounded like a good idea. Yeah. But then, so did Marxism. At least the Hollywood mu uh, movie studio execs keen to make big bucks by playing it safe. And that's not what they've done. With themes and stories that might be familiar to a mass audience. A modern remake of Snow White cashing in on the beloved Disney original with fresh stars, A-list names, and a fairy tale with a happy ending that, could, that everyone could enjoy. It has not turned out that way. No. Not at all. Disney's uh, 300 million plus. Now, I have to take exception there because it's uh, from what I've heard, okay, from what I've heard from people who I trust, it's 400 million. Too many reshoots, two years of production. I'm sorry, but no, this movie needs to hit damn near a billion to be profitable. Like, at all. Uh, has generated a slew of headlines for all the wrong reasons. First, given the original relied on the outdated social mores of the 1930s, and I've specially highlighted, double highlighted, outdated there in trans turquoise, because what's so outdated about the social mores of the 1930s? Men were men. They were men enough, they're male enough or man enough to go and win wars. What about now? Hmm. Not so sure. A lot of demasculinization has happened and it has worked quite effectively. This is why you have such a thing as soy boys, which used to just be called metrosexuals, but now we prefer cocks. Um, it rapidly became engulfed in a row over sexism, right? Still though, why is the social mores of the 1930s so bad? Men were men, women were women. Babies were had, families were had, dynasties were started. Dynasties, sorry, not dynasties. And um, all was well. And in most countries, like the one where I live, these things still are very much the norm. And for that reason, a lot of people and a lot of money and equity is being transferred to the East. A debate over whether or not to keep the original Seven Dwarves and was plunged into the centre of America's bitter culture wars over race. <laughs> you see, this shouldn't happen to a children's movie. If you had just cast a regular white actress to play Snow White, whose skin was white as snow, and 
you know, seven little people to play the dwarves, guess what? You'd have a family film. It would have been out by now. People would have said, hey, it's not as good as the original, but it deserves to make some money. Most likely. Because that's what we generally used to say about the live action remakes before every last one of them ended up like this. But this is the worst. Its lead star, Rachel Zegler, said she hated the original 1937 film. That's right, she did. She had to do an apology tour for that and branded its story weird, weird. With a stalker-like Prince Charming character who steals a kiss from a girl in a coma who could not give consent. No. He loves her, he wants to marry her, she is in desperate trouble, and only true love's kiss can save her. There literally was no one else for the job. I don't know, you know, I mean, people who are unconscious, who have car accidents and end up in comas, can't consent to being revived, but I bet they're damned happy when they do get revived. Then a row broke out over whether Disney should have seven dwarves as characters. In a story called Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Then America's right wing, oh of course, because it's always the right wing, isn't it? Right wing. Whenever you read right wing in something, I want you to just mentally switch those words out for commonsensical. Piled on because of Zegler's Latina background, the original Snow White was conceived as having very pale skin. Yes. It was a Brothers Grimm thing, wasn't it? Pretty sure they intended her to have skin as white as snow. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, Zegler herself, of course, kept making it worse and worse because she's an outspoken advocate for Palestinian rights, whereas Gal Gadot, who plays the evil Quinn, is a high-profile Israeli actor. Oh, dear. Not surprisingly, the two have very different takes on the bloody conflict in Gaza. Oh, wow. A Disney movie. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. But really, it's all about Gaza. You do this to yourselves, Disney. You do this to yourselves. After the 7th of October, Gadot, who starred as Wonder Woman in an Instagram post in December, called out the international community for what she said was its failure to condemn those particular people's uh, forcing and mother of women during the attack in which more than 1,100 uh, tiny hats were killed. Damn. That's awful. Uh, she then made a film about it, but she didn't, or she didn't make a film. She screened a film about it, but she didn't want to attend because she was actually afraid for her safety. So there you go. Meanwhile, Zegler has been public with a pro-Palestine stance since 2021. Yeah. She posted Instagram stuff and all kinds of other rubbish promoting Palestine. You know, just like those leftists outside uh, the DNC. And the ones who crashed into pride marches and started fights. Hmm. Funny. Violence and social disruption seem to always follow when you follow Palestine. Oh well. Uh, Godot then posted the, uh, the Snow White trailer and a video of a photo shoot which included shots of her and Zegler embracing. Some people on Instagram praised her and shared Israeli flag emojis. Others posted free Palestine and Palestinian flags. This is what happens when you radicalize half of the culture. You end up with zealots everywhere. Great. Well, I guess it keeps me in content. Shortly thereafter, Zegler shared a post on X thanking people for the 120 million views of the trailer. At the time that she posted this, the trailer had not got more than 5% of that. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, anyway, and wrote in a subsequent comment, and always remember Free Palestine. Uh, Alia Malak of the Palestinian Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel. Wow. Really wearing it on your sleeve there. Like, almost literally. <laughs> the Palestinian Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Israel. Can I have one of them? Can I have the Common Sense YouTuber Campaign for the Academic and Cultural Boycott of Leftism? Can I start that? Is that 
Should I have named my channel that? I don't know. Um, by choosing to directly represent, J uh, I'm not saying it, the Seidel, Israel, Gal Gadot's films are boycottable. Ooh, Malak wrote. Um, but there you go. Some people then dispute whether boycotts are actually effective in these sort of situations. Um, Malak supports, uh, supports a boycott of the film despite Zegler's advocacy for Palestinians. Well, throwing her under the bus then, eh? We deeply appreciate that lead actor Rachel Zegler has publicly expressed support for Palestinian liberation, but that is not sufficient to undo the harm done by the incursion or inclusion of Israel's cultural ambassador. Um, all right, boycott it. Go ahead. I don't give a crap. In fact, I might watch it just to screw with you. Joel Petlin, superintendent of the Kiryas Joel School District, thinks Zegler was just trying to goad her co-star, oh, oh, who I believe has been subject to some level of abuse because she's Israeli. Well, that's actually true. See, they like to say that Rachel Zegler had some abuse, but no, what happened was she was criticised. And when you make an utter ass of yourself, you can expect to get criticised. Anyway, it goes on and on and on for a while. It even brings up J.K. Rowling in there as well because of a perception of her as being transphobic, but more like trans-disgusted. Um, there is a little doubt that Snow White's backers did not want to end up in a fight over the Middle East. <laughs> I forgot about that sentence. <laughs> It's so stupid. Snow White's backers do not want to end up in a fight over the Middle East. What is this, a South Park episode? You know, like Santa and Jesus fighting in the Middle East. Snow White's backers do not want to end up in a fight over the Middle East. Well, then you probably should have cast people who knew when to shut up. The Guardian then says that there's no way of avoiding it. I mean, okay, what about... You know, NDAs. How about you You make it a blanket rule that if you want to work in this film, you sign here, please, and it says no political rhetoric while you are working on this film. None until the film has come out in cinemas and had at least its opening weekend. That would have done this thing a whole bunch of favors. At least then we'd only be talking about dwarves. As retarded as that is. Even if in the end it has little meaningful impact on that debate. So you acknowledge then that it makes no difference. Jesus Christ. This is the almighty guardian, everybody. So there you go. They have no answers either. Neither do I. All of this could have been avoided, of course, like I just said, by telling your actors that you don't get paid a damn penny if you say a single freaking thing about any kind of politics at all. If you did that, you might make some freaking money, but no, because Disney, of course, is a leftist organization and they think that what they're doing is actually good. Well, reap what you sow, you slags. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see more of me. I'd like to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything, respect the fans, check out the Discord link below and I'll chat to you next time.